That is my 2020 Tesla Model 3 without the heat pump and that is the 2021 Tesla Model 3 with the heat pump. In this video, we are going to drive both the Teslas with identical speeds in the highway and also identical climate control settings to see which one is more efficient. And if you think the answer to this question is obvious and what everyone has been anticipating, you're in quite for a shock. Now before we start driving, we made sure that all other factors that contribute to battery usage constant on both cars. The seat heater is set to max and also the climate control is set to 21 degrees Celsius in my car without the heat pump. The same goes for the 2021 Tesla Model 3 with the heat pump where the seat heater and the climate control is set identical to my car. Both the cars also had similar preconditioning and driving time before we started the test. We are going to be driving a distance of 50 kilometers at a rate of 100 kilometers an hour today. So I reset trip A on both the cars so we can get the rate of energy usage and also the energy used at the end of this video. Also, we have the energy consumption chart open on both the Model 3s so that you can follow along on how much energy is being used as we drive. And lastly, we would keep the speed identical on both cars. I did a video a couple of weeks ago where I did a side-by-side -side comparison with the 2021 Tesla Model 3 in front of me versus the 2020 Tesla Model 3 that I'm in right now. In that video, I listed all the differences that you can expect when you buy a brand new 2021 Tesla Model 3 versus when you go for a cheaper option and buy a 2020 used Tesla Model 3. In that video, you'll see that one of the major upgrades that I listed was the addition of the heat pump to the 2021 Tesla Model 3 refresh. The heat pump is said to be three times more efficient in heating up your car, which will in turn give you more range on the new Tesla. As the heat pump is said to be three times more efficient than the current HVAC system in my current 2020 Tesla Model 3, a lot of people has anticipated that it would give you a better range in winter conditions. All of this sounds good on paper, so we wanted to put the heat pump in real world conditions so that we could compare it with an earlier Tesla Model 3. The temperature today is minus 6 degrees Celsius in Manitoba. It is crucial that the weather stays above minus 15 degrees Celsius for our test today, as it is said that the heat pump works best on temperatures above minus 15 degrees Celsius. But with headwinds coming at us at 20 miles per hour, the feels like temperature is minus 14. After 15 kilometers of driving, the Tesla with the heat pump has been discharging energy at a rate of 272 watt hour per kilometer, and it has used up four kilowatt hour of energy to drive 15.3 kilometers. Surprisingly, my Tesla without the heat pump has been using up energy at the rate of 261 watt hour per kilometer and used up 4 kilowatt of energy to drive the exact same distance which is 15.3 kilometers. Note, the higher this number gets, the more energy will be dissipated. So in this case, the Tesla with the heat pump has been dissipating more energy than my Tesla without the heat pump. The full distance we were going to cover for our test today was 50 kilometers. So when we were halfway there, we turned and took a U-turn to return back to our original starting point. To make the energy consumption chart as close to each other as possible, you can see that regenerative braking is being used instead of the actual brakes to brake for this U-turn. Now this is what the battery consumption chart looked like on the Tesla Model 3 with the heat pump. Both the cars were going against the 20 miles per hour headwind that I mentioned before. I'll ignore the projected range of 113 kilometers just because both the battery life of both the cars are close but they're not identical. However, the average watt hour per kilometer on the Tesla Model 3 with the heat pump is 245. Note, the lower this number, the more projected range that you're going to get on your Tesla. So if this number goes down to 130 watt hour per kilometer, you'd be getting the EPA 424 kilometer range with 100% battery life on the Tesla Model 3. 
The 130 watt hour per kilometer can be easily achieved when the temperature outside is close to positive 15 degrees Celsius. This is what the energy consumption chart looked like on my 2020 Tesla. You can already see that the average watt hour per kilometer on my 2020 Tesla without the heat pump is lower than the one with the heat pump. After the U-turn, this is the fluctuation on the energy consumption chart on the Tesla with the heat pump. And this is the fluctuation on my energy consumption chart. You can see how similar the graphs are. When we weren't going against the wind anymore, the energy consumption reduced and got better and it got down to 164 watt hour per kilometer but weirdly enough the tesla model 3 with the heat pump was still consuming more energy than my tesla at 167 watt hour per kilometer after we were done with the test and driving both the cars as similarly as possible this is the final result for my 2020 tesla model 3 without the heat pump you can see that my car used up 10 kilowatt hour of energy at a rate of 204 watt hour per kilometer. And trust me when I say this, we were as surprised as you are right now when we saw that the Tesla with the heat pump used up 11 kilowatts of energy at a rate of 209 watt hour per kilometer. We are still trying to figure out why this happened. Initially, when I started recording for this video, the title that I had in mind was how efficient the Tesla Model 3 is with the heat pump. But after doing the test and my 2020 Tesla without the heat pump coming up out on top of using less energy than the one with the heat pump brings a lot of questions. Did I miss anything? Was there anything extra running on the Tesla with the heat pump? Or does this look right to you guys? Is the heat pump good enough for only preheating the car efficiently? Both the cars did not have air wheel caps, so that should not have made a difference either. This is the climate control setting on the Tesla with the heat pump, and this is the climate control setting on my Tesla. You can see how identical they are. I've been trying to crack this for a while, but I can't seem to spot any mistakes that I did on the test. Comment down below if you think I should modify the test in some way and redo it again. Let me know if you find anything that I missed out on. Here is the energy consumption chart for the Tesla with the heat pump for you guys to investigate. And here's the energy consumption chart for my Tesla. Also, one last thing before I head to my conclusion is that I kept a lot of space with the Tesla in front of me so that wind resistance would not be an issue either. Considering that I can't really find any of my mistakes that I did on this video, here's my take on the brand new Tesla with the heat pump. The main question is for all of you watching and thinking of buying a new Tesla, is it worth it? And my answer and recommendation would be different depending on where you live. So if you live in a place where the federal incentive for buying an electric vehicle is no more, I would recommend getting a 2020 used Tesla so that you get more features for less price when you get a Tesla. You'll see on Tesla's used inventory that a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus a 2020 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus comes with full self-driving with the with around the same price range as a brand new Model 3. So I'd say it'll be a better option to get a used Standard Range Plus or even a dual motor for around the same price for getting a brand new 2021 Tesla Model 3. But if you are living in Canada, especially where I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and the federal incentive is still on, you get $5,000 off of the bill of sale of a brand new Tesla anyways. So you might as well go for the brand new Tesla instead of looking into the older models. In this case, is it worth it? 100%. Just because you're buying the exact same Tesla that I bought and paid for the exact same price, but you're getting more stuff 
you get factory chrome delete which people usually spend hundreds of dollars on doing themselves you get the new nicer matte black interior that doesn't really scratch easy like mine also the interior is redone so that your sentry mode footage is more secure in the dashboard now power lift gate that my tesla does not have less wind noise because of the new double pane windows and the heat pump with no extra cost so you might as well utilize the rebate that's still going on in canada for buying a brand new tesla but if you're still contemplating on which model year tesla you're getting you can see a side-by-side -side comparison that i did with the 2021 tesla model 3 refresh with my 2020 tesla model 3 i'll link it somewhere in this video and also down in the description box and if you're considering buying a new tesla anytime soon december would be the best time just because elon announced that anyone buying new tesla this december would be getting one year of free supercharging be sure to use my referral code down in the description box when you buy a new tesla to get the maximum benefits and that is the end of this video as always if you guys like the video smash that like button it really helps out my channel and also if you're new to the channel welcome and subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get notified when i upload a new video have a wonderful rest of the day goodbye